Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, we've been actually really excited about this series called The Enneagram and the Good News. And we've really just been introducing types um, and then bringing in some guests, but really focusing on Jesus as the person that is in all nine types. Yeah, that's been really uh, wonderful. People seem to really be resonating with it. I know we're resonating with it. And we've been Finding focusing. Jesus everywhere. Yeah, that, that helps. Anyway, um, we've been focusing uh, in these first three talks on the gut triad. Mm -hmm. So the eight, the powerful, the powerful person, person. Mm -hmm. the one, the good person, and the nine, I don't want to miss the nine because I'm a nine, the peaceful person. Well, you forgot the nine. Well, that's how it usually goes. <laughs> you didn't even plan <laughs> to do that. So, hey, we, um, we are introducing the types in a way that give you um, a feeling of, of Jesus, you know, the Christ in you, the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. and, um, and yet our books uh, are all around what is called the Harmony Triads. So we believe that you are more than your type. Um, when I first wrote uh, the Enneagram of Personality Styles back in 2006, I really didn't understand um, harmony until I met Dr. Daniels, Dr. David Daniels from uh, Stanford University and one of the original founders of the International Enneagram Association. In 2009, he introduced me to the harmony triads. And right out of that, I wrote what was called Motions of the Soul, which um, not only worked with the harmony triads, as was found uh, you know, in Dr. Daniels' article on drdaviddaniels.com, but blowing it out uh, in our own Christian tradition mm -hmm. to give every style a head IQ, a heart EQ and a gut GQ experience. Mm -hmm. So while the people have not been talking about IQ, EQ, and GQ, so for the eight, that would be gut eight, two heart, five head, mm -hmm. right? For the nine. For the nine, it is nine gut, it's three heart, and it's six head. Yep. Yeah. And for the one, it's one gut, and their heart is the four, and the head is the seven. Mm -hmm. And so what we say, even in both of the books, the name of our chapters, so we'll just let you know what the eight, the name of the eight chapter is, that is justice is contemplative love. And the nine? The nine is peace affects team. Yep. Yeah, and then the one, goodness creates joy. And those are not just titles, they're actually prayers, they can be a breath prayer. So if the eight can slow down that powerful energy mm -hmm. and take a breath and remember that justice from their gut is a contemplative, like think about it, love. Mm -hmm. And then the nines. The nine, so the nine, uh, if we can go to that place that we're always trying to get as nines, peace effects, mm -hmm. effects mm -hmm. as a three, go to our heart, be effective, and then to our head with the six team. Yeah. So six is our wonderful teamsters. Yeah, yep. they are. And so what we know is giving people a way to breathe. We know this in neuroscience. It's very important to breathe. Just take a breath. Mm -hmm. And to actually give you the name for your harmony triad, for the eight, eight, two, and five, for the nine, three, six, and nine, and for the one, one, one four, four, and seven, seven. Mm -hmm. is really super helpful. Yep. Um, and so our books both have uh, practices that are um, both mm -hmm. Motions of the Soul and Spiritual Rhythms for the Enneagram, um, giving you a way to activate all three centers of intelligence, which with practice, it's really important. Now, what we want to add to that is something, one of the questions that came in for us um, was from somebody who said, okay, I took the test, WEPSS.com, and the numbers that came up high were two, four, and eight. And so not two, five, and eight. So we just want you to notice that two, four, and eight would make you two-hearted. The two is love, the four is the original person, and eight that you know justice person that would give you two heart spaces and no head so mm -hmm. 
you need heart, but you also need your gut and you also need your head. Mm -hmm. So what we would say is that however you come out on your test, that's diagnostic. Right, that's diagnostic, but we want all of us to focus on harmony where we go from our gut space, heart space, and head space, and we get movement. Mm -hmm. So that's where transformation really comes in. Mm -hmm. So we don't get stuck in tight. We don't get stuck in a space. We don't get stuck just in our heart. We don't get stuck just in our gut or body. And we don't just get stuck in our head. We get movement. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why we're teaching the Harmony Triad. Yeah, and yeah. one of the things that we're, uh, you know, probably two things we're really um, concerned about right now with the popularity of the Enneagram is um, one, uh, that people are putting people in type boxes and you are more than your type, which is why we've written the books on the Enneagram that give you movement. Um, and so it's great that we're having a lot of fun with memes, wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but what we would say is that um, this body of knowledge is not just for your information. It is for transformation. Yes. And, uh, and so we really are um, hoping that the people that are listening to our podcast, uh, the people who are sitting in, um, in the room with us as we uh, coach or offer spiritual direction, are gaining access to all three centers of intelligence. Um, so it's not just enough to know the Enneagram. Oh, I'm a type three. Right. Well, yeah, I need help with my three. <laughs> I, need, I need my six and my nine to come online in order to do the work of transformation. So that's one of our big concerns. Do you want to say anything more about that? Well, just just that, that we're wanting to get movement in our in our interiority so mm -hmm. that our life moves fully. We're, we are created in the image of God, the likeness of God, and God, uh, we believe, is Trinitarian. So we just think that we're Trinitarian beings. Mm -hmm. We have a head, we have a heart, and we have a gut, just as we're created in God's image. And we think that movement inside of those spaces in our life is a way for us to move forward in Christ. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. The other thing that, you know, we're, we're so happy about the Enneagram gaining popularity and watching all the people that are having conversation. Um, but we would like to say that uh, be mindful of the people that you're listening to. You know, are they accredited uh, by the International Enneagram Association? So, you know, the, the training that we do actually as, um, as professionals, um, we created a training program that went through the rigors of the International Enneagram Association. So those that first started teaching the Enneagram in the West, uh, you can look it up, internationalenneagram.org. And if you're being trained, if you're sitting with a coach, if you're sitting with a spiritual director, see if they've actually done the work to get accredited with the Enneagram. Because there are a lot of books out there, there are a lot of trainings out there, and we're grateful that this has come to the forefront because we do believe the Enneagram is a tool for transformation. And like any other good body of knowledge, what is the rigor that that person has gone through to have their material uh, actually accredited? So just, you know, just know that there's a lot of people talking Enneagram right now and we're having fun. But when you're wanting to learn, when you're wanting to do this good discipleship formational work, find yourself someone who's been um, accredited or find someone who's learned it under an accredited professional. Yeah, and I think uh, a big thing with what you're saying is we, we were recently speaking with a pastor friend of ours in a different part of the country and he expressed to us his desire to begin to implement uh, some Enneagram teaching in his own local congregation. And he said one of the primary reasons for that is he's just concerned that there's some harmful uh, things being embraced. And that's, I think, just wise uh, tending to your congregation. So because right. it, just as much as it could really help with transformation, discipleship, moving forward into who we were created to be in the same way it can be harmful in yeah ways. and let me let me tell you how so for instance i'm a three and if somebody has been looking at you know that type and they're learning from someone who is um you know got three in a box and saying mm -hmm. if you're a three you're like this 
Well, just know that there are three subtypes, right? Social, sexual, and self-preservation, which means there are really 27, uh, you know, types on the Enneagram. And then if they're actually moving in harmony, there's a whole nother, you know, uh, underexplored area that, you, that is um, needing to be explored. And, and one of the things, you know, uh, we love the process. Enneagram is a diagnostic tool and gives us ways to look at the Enneagram, but it is a model. And all models are incomplete, but some are some are helpful. They are. Yes. Some are helpful. So what we want to do is we want to say, how can we help you on this journey? Um, and if you carried around a triangle with you everywhere you went, as Scott said, head, heart, gut, mm -hmm. right? The Trinitarian image of God, uh, Father, Son, Spirit. And so, you know, as we know, the Spirit of God all throughout Scripture, that beautiful word, pneuma, um, uh, ruah, uh, the, the words that actually give us the idea of the breath of God. Mm -hmm. um, we just want to say that you are more than your type. You have a head, heart, and gut, and God has made you in God's own image. So we invite you to listen to all of our uh, podcasts. You'll get to hear people talking in their harmony triads, mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm, I'm opening up to more. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, so in addition to what we're doing here with the good news, We've done several before now, yep. unpacking harmony a little more. Yep, the Enneagram and Christianity, make sure you check all of those out. And um, we're just trying to be as helpful as we can with the material that we have. Yeah, so with that, peace. God bless. Amen, amen. Well, good morning, you all. Amen. You look good. You look good. You look like you're ready to love God and be loved by God this morning. Yeah. Right? And so do let's do more of that. Yeah, definitely. So I want to welcome everybody again. We're continuing on in our series on the Enneagram, a tool for the good news. And want to also welcome, we've had uh, at least 3,000 people from different parts of the country around the world that have been joining us during this series online. So let's welcome all of our welcome friends. Welcome our friends from around the... That have the been joining... Wherever. Either, either tapping into the podcast or seeing the Sunday morning uh, service through uh, our website, different avenues that it's going out. So we're grateful. And however we can be helpful to them in this conversation, we're grateful for that. So... Uh, and most of all, we're, we're grateful that we're all here today, right? Mm. It's good to be here. Anyway, in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, it says, God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. So we've been talking about that we're all carrying about in us the likeness of God. So the process of our life is to be transformed more and more. The Bible would use the language, for instance, from glory to glory, more into that likeness, more into the image that God has created us in. And then there, the Enneagram essentially is nine personality styles uh, that show up in different ways. And we've been talking about that Jesus exemplifies all nine of those personality styles and so much more. Jesus perfected each personality yes. style, right? Can you say it? Jesus perfected all. Jesus perfected right, it all. Right. And then simply, um, as, as we're talking about the Enneagram, it's just, it's a tool for transformation. It's a tool for our growth, for spiritual formation, for discipleship, for our relational world, and for sharing the good news. Everybody say good news. Good news. Yeah, no bad good news. news here today. Aren't That's you right. glad? Right? Yeah. You have been removed from the world where the, all the bad news is happening. And right now you have something in common with every person in the room, and that is we're all seeking God right? We're all waking up to God's love for us because if you walked in the door today, you walked in for some reason or another. And Romans 12, 2 is a fabulous scripture about transformation. If anybody would like to read it with me, let's do that. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Stop. You know some of the patterns of this world that are unhelpful, right? Unreasonable, ungodly. There are patterns that are in this world that are not serving us well, my friends. Mm -hmm. Are y'all awake with me this morning? Yes. Okay, I, I know one is coming to you right now. <laughs> There's a pattern in this world. It might be in your own family system. 
And we don't want to conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed, transformed by the renewing of our, our mind, mind, which is not just what we think, but our actions, our affections, what we have committed our lives to. Mm -hmm. And so then, everybody, let's read that. Then, then you, you will, will be, be able, able to test and, and approve what, what God's will is, his, his good, pleasing, and perfect, perfect will. will. So transformation requires, first of all, our attention, um, but it's not just about our attention. In other words, being aware of what's going on in our life, allowing God to enter into those areas and bring awareness and pay attention to what's going on in our interiority, but then bring intention, then bring some practice uh, to what we become aware of so that we can move toward transformation. So being aware is great, but in and of itself, it's not enough. So there needs to be some spiritual practices that move us away from our dysfunction. Oh, look at that. So the caterpillar says to the butterfly, you've changed. And the butterfly says, we're supposed to, <laughs> right? And so whatever stage of the you, you know, particular transformation you're living through right now, you may be looking more like the caterpillar, right? You might still have some of the stuff on you that you've beat off getting out, or you may be feeling beautiful this morning. And so just know that all stages of transformation are beautiful in God's eyes, and they're all necessary. So if you've got stuff hanging on you today, just know we're here to help get it off. All right, so go ahead, just pick something off your friend and say, it's coming <laughs> off. Right? So when we say that the Enneagram is a tool for the good news, this really has something to do with how are you showing up with the people in your life, right? And so, you know, I have lots of people who don't know the good news of Jesus Christ. Do you guys know anybody like that that doesn't know the good news of Jesus? And so when I show up with them, I could preach at them or I could show up looking more like God. I am made in the image of God. All people are made in the image of God, but we have lost the likeness. And there are days I look more like Jesus, and some days I look le less like Jesus, right? And so the reality is, is that if I really want to bring good news to people, people care more about who you are than what you say. Mm -hmm. It's true. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. they, they are, they're looking to see a sermon right? Yes. Not just hear one. And so here is what Jesus says in John 17. He says, my prayer is not for them alone, talking about the disciples that were with him on that day. He said, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That's us. Because the disciples were with Jesus, we have a message. Mm -hmm. John wrote this one down that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe you sent me. Mm -hmm. Like if we're in God, looking like God, people will actually believe that Jesus came. But if I look like the devil on Monday <laughs> and the people that I'm with on Monday, they're probably not hearing the good news. Right. If I go home at night and bring the devil to Scott, right? That's never happened. Never. No. Never. Right? So, you know, and so Scott will just start picking the stuff <laughs> off me and say, come on, you can be transformed. People will believe that Jesus sent him. See, the Enneagram is a tool for the good news. He said, I have given them glory that you gave me. How many of you remember? We've been talking about glory. Another way to say it is image. This is an interchangeable word here. Mm -hmm. I have given them the image that you gave me that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Say it with me, friends. Then, then the, the world, world will know, know that, that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. me. The words of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like the more that we look like Jesus, the more the church will believe. Right now, you know, there's a lot of antagonism around the people of God. And that's because some of us are not showing up on Monday looking like God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Especially on social media. So <laughs> true empathy requires that you step outside yourself and view things entirely from the perspective of another person. 
The Enneagram gives us a way to like step outside of ourselves and not bring just what I think, but I want to know how you think, how you feel, how you act. And if I can live in that kind of empathy, people will see God show up. Because did you ever notice Jesus would answer, he would ask questions that he already knew the answer? Like, who touched me? Because he wanted to get into the story of the woman who needed to be healed from the issue of blood. Yes. It wasn't just like, oh, yeah, she got healed. No big thing. I'm not going to ask her. He's like, who touched me? And then if you read that passage of Scripture, it says she told Jesus everything that happened to her. See, when we start to show up with empathy, it's good news. And people will start telling us their story. People will actually tell us their story. Today, we're actually moving into heart types, these heart emotional intelligence. Like, people who have this, they have a heart connection. You know, some people see the world through their head. Some people, you know, see the world through what they experience in their body. Like, no, you know, right, wrong, good, bad, just, unjust. The heart people, they're like, am I connected? Am I connected now? Are we still connected? And when they are um, in, a, in a tough spot, when connection is broken, they'll do everything to reconnect. If they're, you know, and dismissing like gut reactions, like maybe I shouldn't reconnect with that person. Maybe that's not healthy for me. Or they distrust people who live in their heads. But we're going to meet the two who gives us this beautiful scripture that is so much the loving heart of Jesus Christ. Yeah, this is a great scripture, scriptural descriptive of the two, the loving person, the caring person. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. This is so much the energy behind the life of a two. So we know that Jesus is loving. Again, he is the exemplar of exemplars when it comes to any type. Anybody want to give a shout out for the love of Jesus? Yeah, how's that? I mean... Yeah. <laughs> so we see uh, in the scripture, the scripture says this about Jesus. This is... Will you stand for the reading of the gospel? Luke 6, starting with verse 17, it says, speaking of Jesus, he went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, from the coastal region, around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven for that is how their ancestors, ancestors treated the prophets. So even now, God, we receive your loving care through your word and the promise of not just this scripture and this account, but just the flow of your love through the gospel. Amen. You can go ahead and be seated. This is vintage Jesus loving and caring for people. It's powerful. The imagery in this scripture is profound. It starts out here in Luke 6 with the statement that he came down with them and stood with them on a level place. It's the picture of Jesus coming down from his place of authority and power and moving into a place of compassion and care and looking into the eyes of those who had such desperate need, which would be all of us 
came down and stood with them and stands with us. In a broken world, Jesus comes down and stands in this level place, not to be uh, just caring from a distance or caring afar off, but literally entering into their world and ours. Jesus shows up. He engages them. He's first of all moved with compassion. The scripture uses this term over and over again. In Matthew 9, the scripture says, then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion. Everyone say compassion. compassion. He had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus comes down and begins to compassionately love them, and Jesus shows up with this two-style energy and shows up in our life and brings compassion and love and care. Peter says this about Jesus later when ministering the good news to a guy named Cornelius. He says this in Acts 10, 38. He said, Jesus of Nazareth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. So you just see it over and over and over again. Jesus engaging. The imagery can't be mistaken. And example after example after example, Jesus loves and cares throughout the gospel. And example after example after example in this room and in the lives of every human being in history, Jesus shows up with care and compassion. But don't make a mistake, the wording is powerful as well in another way. When it says he came down, he did come down from somewhere. Jesus was healthy. He was the, the vintage ultimate example of a style two in that he fully engaged. But healthy twos don't just fully engage, but they have this rhythm of being able to take care of themselves. The reason that Jesus was coming down, if you read back a few verses, is Jesus is up on a mountain right before this happens. And Jesus is with his friends. We would kind of call it a retreat. He'd spend the previous evening praying with his friends, hanging out, being refreshed and replenished, so that out of a healthy place, Jesus enters into the turmoil and chaos that love uh, uh, needs to uh, enter into, and he comes with a full replenished tank. It's this beautiful rhythm that we see this back and forth. He came down from the mountain he came out filled and refreshed. He pushed away from the refreshment and came down and emptied himself by loving and caring. Remember years ago, we had this guy, Richard. Claire and I, early in our marriage, it was one of kind of our traditions like on holidays. And I don't remember if this was Thanksgiving or Christmas. Uh, we would always invite folks that maybe we met at church or we met in the community that we thought they didn't have anywhere to have a holiday dinner. So we would invite them to our house. So on this particular holiday, we were still in the Detroit area and we lived in this really small house and we decided we were going to take some video. And so we had kind of this uh, mishmash of people in the house and Richard was one of them. And the video starts out, you know when you do ho home videos, for those of you that are too young, you don't know what home videos are anymore. This was like the VHS style. It was not with an apple. Right, you didn't use your phone for this. There was like this thing, you look like you are part of uh, ESPN or something, filming in the living room. So anyway, uh, we started the filming. The video was about a half hour long, but it kind of spanned the whole event, which was several hours. And the video starts with a shot where we're all sitting at the table and we're eating, and at the end of the table is Richard. And we're all eating and smiling and waving at the camera, and we're filling up on turkey and all the fixings and everybody's having a great time. The video goes on and the setting changes. The next scene, there's a group of us that are playing a game at the table. There's all kinds of fun going on. And in the background is Richard. 
still eating and Richard waves in the background. And then uh, the next scene kind of rolls around. There's another group praying and the, whoever the videographer is, is videotaping the prayer meeting. In the background is Richard still eating, eating pumpkin pie or something. And then it goes into dancing begins and singing kind of a karaoke atmosphere and people are having fun and dancing around. And there's Richard still at the table in the background waving and smiling and eating eating. For hours, Richard stayed at the table, never pushed himself away. Years later, our kids, we were showing them this video. They didn't know Richard. So we're showing them this video and they kind of catch Richard. And we had never really noticed that Richard never left the table. He just kept eating. It was like miraculous how much Richard was able to eat and not get up from the table. And our kids said, look at that guy, who is he? He never leaves the table and he just keeps eating. And, thus, and so it is with some of us, that we just never, when it comes to loving and caring, we're good on the replenishing. We like Richard could sit at the table for hours or months or weeks or years, and just keep replenishing the tank, but never emptying it out, never creating a new fresh hunger in us. So I have a question. When it comes to this two-style energy, which is in all of us, caring and loving, not just the twos among us, not just the people that find this is their home base, but all of us are called to love and to care, how the question is this, how am I doing with replenishing and engaging? Am I engaging too much? Am I, am not, am I not replenishing where I'm not doing self-care? Or, am I, re, or am, I, am I just replenishing and not engaging and not creating a hunger in myself? Jesus exemplifies in a beautiful way the rhythm of loving yourself and loving others, caring for yourself and caring for others. So we realize that there's this beautiful scripture that gives us a way to see Jesus, the one that is always doing, and yet Jesus did replenish. And I wanna introduce you to somebody else in our midst, our own lovely Skylar. Skylar is a two, did you guys know that? She's a two. And Skylar, tell everybody what you do for a living uh, when you're not playing guitar and singing to us. <laughs> um, I'm a radiation therapist, so I work with patients with cancer. Yeah. And, you know, um, Skylar, I, I remember when you were choosing this path and the years of your study and you know, you really felt like this was a call for you to be able to be with pe people, to care for them in their most difficult time. And so Skylar's gonna read to you a description of the twos. Okay. I am a friendly, self-sacrificing person. I love to see what a person needs and then be the one to give it to them. I'm very intuitive and sensitive to others. I have a strong desire to be loved and appreciated for what I do. I would like to do more for people than I do and will go above and beyond the call of duty. I naturally give of myself. Being busy with the care of others and tending to their needs can make me unaware of my own needs. I am not good at saying no. I don't want to disappoint and I put more energy into loving others than loving myself. Some people may think I am clingy or codependent or possessive. It saddens me if people think I'm trying to control them through my caring. I like people to see me as cheerful, self-sufficient, warm-hearted, and sacrificing. I work very hard to connect in a heartfelt way. I am nurturing and empathetic, but sometimes when I am hurt, I become martyr-like and say things like, after all I've done for you, when I am offended, I can get vindictive or take revenge. And what we love about um, Skylar being brave enough to read this to you, don't you like, I, I mean, if you knew this in your 20s, what would you be like now, right? One of the things that Skylar um, uh, did was, as we were getting ready to marry, um, uh, 
them for you know this year. Skylar and Jacob. Yeah, Jack congratulations. And Jacob. Let's oh, yeah. congratulate them. And Jacob is a five. And a five is the, the observer type. And so the two of them are quite a lovely combo of contemplation and caregiving. And so when they went through their stuff in their premarital work, Skylar as a two and Jacob as a five, it was so much fun to watch them say, and here's how I can help keep you from killing yourself. <laughs> and here's how I can help you get out of your cave. And it was just, it was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you guys are a picture of doing that work of transformation mm -hmm. and saying, I want to be with what's true, made in God's image, and let go of those things that don't serve me in living well. So why don't you guys say, hey, Skylar, we love you. Thanks, right? Skylar. Their true self, they are warm and generous and empathetic and enthusiastic and nurturing, and they show a strong care, measured helpfulness, wise offerings, and divine love. Yep. They have great styles of caring in their personality. Yep, their redemptive virtue is humility. Their personality is they're a carer. They're helpers, that makes sense, right? They're pleasers as leaders. Their relationships are helpful, and their communication style is helpful and compassionate. So Scott's gonna be a two and hold this for me right now because we're about to I'll bring you somebody that has been joining us actually on the podcast um, for a couple of months now. And this friend is from Oregon. You guys know that you Eugene, have Oregon. Hello, Gregory. Woo! There's Gregory. Hi, Gregory. Good morning, Claire. Good morning, Scott. <laughs> Good morning, Good morning uh, Crossroads. Uh, we are so glad you're with us today, and um, we're going to give you just a way to look at the people. <laughs> All right. That makes the two feel better. That's right. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> so, hey, Gregory, you are a two, and um, we're just wondering what it's like for you on your best day. And when you show up and you're healthy, you're replenished, what, what, is, what does it look like for you to bring yourself to the world? Well, um, always starts with a good breakfast, for sure. <laughs> but who made it? <laughs> That's optional. And, uh, but you know, it, it really, I was thinking about this the last couple of days, you know, I've been visiting with you guys. And uh, I, I think a quick example of that would be recently, uh, I came to see you all and I flew into Chicago a couple of days before um, I came to visit uh, for the seminar. And my daughter happened to be uh, who also lives in Oregon, happened to be in Chicago, and we thought it would be fun to to meet up. So we ended up uh, staying at the, the same place and having dinner, and then the following morning we had brunch together. And and just, uh, you know, that, that sense of connection and just uh, uh, being together with her, it, it just doesn't get uh, any better than that. She's, she's so fun to be with. It's such a delight, and... Um, you know, she hits all my she hits all my my high buttons. Just uh, she's very encouraging, and she loves to share what's going on in her life. And so there's just a, a really deep sense of connection that I, you know, feel with her and and people I love and and uh, family and friends. And and that's that's what it's all about for me, for sure. Yeah, and um, and you know, there is the vice of pride for a two. Um, and how well you can take care of people, love people, like you're probably the best at it, you know, you really do know how to care for your daughter. So how do you detach from the vice of pride um, that nobody can love her like you can love her? How do you do that? What's a spiritual practice you use? <laughs> oh, you're, you're waking me up early here on the West Coast. That's a great question. <laughs> um, I, I would say that... Um, you know, first of all, I, I think my, my sensitivity allows me to, to be pretty self-aware. So it starts with just some self-awareness that there is pride there. And, it, and the more I tune into that, the more I recognize that it's very subtle and it can come along in a lot of different ways. For example, I could consider myself, you know, pretty, pretty sensitive guy. And often I will... Um, run into someone, you know, could be family, could be friends, whatever, that isn't maybe what I would perceive as, as sensitive. So I would immediately elevate myself above <laughs> that other person. Like, well, 
hey, I'm uh, I'm more sensitive than they are. And that's, you know, that's just the road to, to, to great And all the right two there. said amen, right? <laughs> that's right. Um, for me. All the two said amen. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And uh, but in terms of working that out, I think I, again, I think it starts with me just being self-aware that it's there. Um, you know, I, I was thinking about that even this morning early when I knew I was going to visit with you all. I think that for me, sometimes recognizing that it's there, and I don't, I don't have. Uh, there's nothing within myself to be able to to heal myself or to walk through that. But I, I think I can. I can uh, put my hand in the in the hand of the Lord and, and with his care. And I think there's a sense of repentance. He invites me into, hey, Greg, there's another way to do this and, you know, and, and steer me a different direction. It doesn't come with condemnation, doesn't come with uh, a heaviness, just more of almost a, a lightness um, and an invitation for me to do it a different way. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, you're giving us a, a picture of the redemptive virtue which is humility. Mm -hmm. And so your willingness to humble yourself and, and allow um, the love of God rather than just the love of Gregory to come forward yeah. is beautiful. We wanna introduce you to Lindsay. Come on up, Lindsay. So Lindsay Marks is another one of our uh, resident twos. She, was, she wrote the liturgy for us this morning for um, communion. Wasn't that beautiful? You guys, we're gonna have copies of that available for you. Hi, and Lindsay. And you know, Lindsay, um, I, I said to Lindsay, Lindsay, I thought you were gonna lead the liturgy, not just write it, I thought you were gonna lead the whole liturgy. And what did you say, Lindsay? Um, I just, I felt really nervous about that. And so I asked Don to read the leader parts and I just, I knew my limit. <laughs> you knew your limit? Like, and you- Shocking. Wow. Sh this is what you call healthy to living. You knew your limit, even though you knew you would disappoint me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you said, oh, I thought that you were going to, we were there at the Keys and you said, oh, I thought that you were going to do the leader part and instantly. My first thought was, oh, I disappointed her. Oh no, I should have read it. I should have done it anyway. But I knew that I just, it would flow better for me and I'd be able to settle into it more and really contribute more if, so I had to ask Don for help and that was actually difficult you know, too. Lindsay's Asking Don for what? Help. <laughs> <laughs> this it's is like a swear word for a two. <laughs> hey. Your reaction to disappointing Claire is a lot more heartfelt than mine. I mean, I, I am, I have so much to grow in. Anyway. I can help you with that. <laughs> yes, you're going to need to. <laughs> she can help That's, you with that. Yes. Yeah, for sure. The yeah. twos have been trying to help me with stuff my whole life. Anyway, go ahead. It's a true story. And, um, you know, and Lindsay, I, I think having boundaries, you know, um, I almost think Henry Cloud wrote that book under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit for twos, very particularly, um, and other styles that are always there, always there to help, always there to fix it, always there. And, um, and so how do you detach from that need to love people better than anybody else does? Um, with great difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that when I first started learning the Enneagram, I was, I was shocked to find out that pride was my vice. I was like, oh, no way, I'm, I am not prideful at all. But it's because I, I enjoy taking sort of a back seat and being pushed to the front is very uncomfortable for me. So that's what I always thought that, that pride looked like was, hey, look at me, look at me. Um, but as I've contemplated it more and gotten to know myself better, I realized that that pride comes with believing that I have the answer for you. And if you don't want to listen to my answer for you and you reject my help, then somehow that says something about mm. me and my worth and my value. So um, I have to be very diligent to stay in relationships with friends who aren't in crisis. You know, like I'll, I'll push in really hard when there's a crisis or when a friend is pregnant. Let me bring you a meal. Let me, you know, clean your house, fold your laundry. I, I want to help you. Um, and, but then there's something in me that says, if you're not in need of me, then you won't love me. Mm. So. Wow. And so you're intentional about not being in relationship with people who are in crisis. And classically twos, 
they, they have a radar for people in right. crisis, yes. right? Yes, I tend to be a magnet for that. And so I'm learning to really ask myself, can I help? And should I help this person or, and sometimes if I just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you just write. And so the first, you know, half a page or even full page is like your to-do list or I'm so hungry or why, you know, why didn't I make coffee before I started? Just all these thoughts. And it clears away all the surface level stuff. And that, that tool has been really helpful for me in finding solutions and really examining what I need to do in a situation before I just jump in and help. And also, you know, sometimes my kids wake up when I'm doing that and I, it makes me have to say, I can't help you right now. I'm doing this for me. I have to do this to stay healthy. So I'll help you when I'm done. And that's really hard too, to say no to my kids. Oh my gosh, well that is awesome. And Scott came up with a new word today, replenishment. It's kind of like replenishment, but it must be like replenishing and repenting at the same time, replent for yeah. the kingdom of yeah. heaven. Is. I think I had just taken a muscle relaxer when I created that <laughs> word and my back hurts. <laughs> so I don't know that I could take all credit for that, but yeah, thanks. So we just want to speak replenishment <laughs> over Lindsay and over Gregory and thank them for taking thank the time you, to be with us today. Thank you, Gregory. Thank you, Lindsay. And Skyler. Thanks, Lindsay. Yeah, and, and so friends, what we know about these beautiful twos who show us the love of God um, and that we could actually abuse the twos in our life that never say no to us. You know that? Mm -hmm. We could actually call yeah, them on so many occasions when we could just figure out what to do on our own. Yeah. My brother-in-law, Sean, is a two, and he learned how to turn his phone off. That's really a miracle, mm -hmm. right? You know that there are like nine levels of health in every Enneagram type. And so just because you are a type two doesn't mean you're exactly like another two. In fact, we've given you pictures all the way through of some people in culture that might be twos. You might know their story, you might not. But these are people who many times didn't have boundaries or loved people well. On some days they loved well, other times, you know, they may have just one more time put themselves in a position where it was not safe for them because they thought they were supposed to love someone who was not helpful. So what we want to say is there are, you know, levels of health in every type. Somebody said last week, are you serious? You had Osama bin Laden and, uh, you know, um, uh, who was it? Gandhi on the same page with Jesus. Are you kidding me? And what we would say is, friends, we all, you know, we are a mixed bag. And some people have taken their own need to be whatever that is to a place where they hurt other people right. or hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. And so just pay attention because when we notice our false self autopilot strategies, we can bring willingness and open, openness to the transforming power of God. We've got to have spiritual practices that our friends have told us about. You can find these in the book. Yeah, Lindsay, Feel free. Lindsay and Gregory did a, did great, a great job of job. sharing some great stuff with us around that. A yep. Scripture memory verse to detach from your need to help. Yeah, and but to we be have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. And so two is practicing breath prayer, breathing in power is from God. Not from me. And there the, are needs that are not yours to take care of. Right. Yep. And so just this growth and integration that Skylar practicing getting to know the five and the eight, which if you listen to the podcast, we'll explain that more. And then get to know how to relate to a two so you can practice empathy. You can get into their perspective and understand that the reason they keep saying yes is they might not have boundaries. Mm -hmm. And you might want to say, I want to be the kind of friend that helps you say no, let's practice it together. No, 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 right? And so we realize that the beauty for twos is they consistently volunteer and their default answer is yes. And they say it's no problem, even when it may be. So yeah. ask them. Ask them about their limits. Make sure that they uh, are paying attention to self-care because they, they can uh, become very unaware of that when they move to unhealth. So let's stand together. How many of you know a two in your life? 
Somebody who shows the love of God, right? Anybody want to throw up your gang sign if you are a two? Right? Uh huh. We got a few in the room. And one of the things about the church, the church can really abuse twos. Did you know that? That we can ask the twos to do way more than they have the bandwidth to do. And so all of us together, let's tell the twos, you can say no to me. Ready? You, you can, can say, say no, no to, to me. me. Which means that maybe we need to be more sensitive to saying yes so that they don't feel like there's so much to do Hello. that's not being done. Right? All of you people who say yes. no really quickly, <laughs> let's practice the word yes together. Ready? One, two, three. Yes. yes. So, you know, there is this reality that if all of us are growing in health and in the transformation that God has for us, mm -hmm. then the body will be one. Yes. And look like God on the earth and not overworked twos and underworked other people mm -hmm. who shall remain nameless, right? We just know that we all bring the image of God and there is a way for us to detach from overdoing it and to welcome God's presence. Can you, we all say Christ in me? Christ in me. Is the hope of glory. The hope of glory. Christ in me. Christ in me. Is the hope of glory. Is the hope of glory. And when we're looking for Christ in us and in one another, then we're not making demands. We're not telling people this is what it means to be loving as a Christian. Mm -hmm. You must do X, Y, Z. But we're opening to the truth of Christ in us. Let's yes. pray. So for a moment, if you're a two, just breathe in and ask God to help you practice being loving in the way that Jesus was loving, both in replenishment and in engagement. And just notice where your yes and no are best given. Asking God to help you be aware of that awareness, develop new patterns of both taking care of yourself as well as you do other people. And if you know someone who is a style too and they're overdoing it, you know, just let them come up in your mind right now. You know that they've given way more than they can and just begin to pray for them. And ask God to give them the grace to see how deeply loved they are. Let the overwhelming, never-ending love of God nourish them. Mm -hmm. And then even ask God, how can I empathize? How can I actually be the kind of person that helps them with their transformation yes. and assists them in that saying yes and no from Christ in them who is the Christ the hope. And just begin to bless them in your prayer right now. Say, God, I bless them. And say their name to God, I bless them. And if it's you that is a style too, say, God, I receive the blessing. And let each one experience your deep love, God.
with us this morning. And we want to, before we leave, make sure that you know about some great resources that we have uh, available for us today. And you'll notice here on this first slide, uh, all these books that Pastor Claire and Pastor Scott have written, Spiritual Rhythms for the Enneagram Motions of the Soul and the Enneagram Personality Series, they are on sale today in the back in the bookstore. And all of the profits from the sales today go to Haiti Missions, Michigan Human Trafficking Task Force, and the Bread of Life Food Pantry. So if today, if you don't have one of those books or if you need a really good Christmas present, uh, pick up some of those books today. Uh, and next, you'll, we want to just remind you again about the Enneagram and Christianity podcast, uh, ways that you can hear these messages and other conversations that we're having about the Enneagram, ways to go deeper into it. And you can find it just by searching uh, Apple Podcasts, Enneagram and Christianity podcast, or you can go right to our webpage, ccmonline.org. Uh, let's go, let's see that next page there. Oh, I'm sorry, let's go to this first. So, but... Okay, there we go. So this is our page with the Enneagram. So ccmonline.org ministries Enneagram. And that can take you to what is the Enneagram. It'll take you to the page. It'll take you to uh, to the podcast and everything. So make sure you check that out. Sorry, Tammy. Thank you for going back. And if you've been in the midst of this series and haven't done you think you're thinking, well, I think I'm this number. I'm thinking that number this seems to be my type. But I haven't done the test. Go to WEPSS.com, webs.com and take the test, and uh, it can help you on your journey and really be able to find out who you are. So that is lovely, and that is all beautiful. So if I can, within the book, um, at the end of each chapter are blessings for each type. And here is our blessing for the week, the blessings for the beloved too. And if you want, maybe put your hands on, on your friends or family, on their shoulders or hold hands, and let's receive this prayer together. As we close this section, Let's take time to breathe in this blessing and create space in our souls. The Lord bless this humble journey home to your true self. May God the Father direct you with insight as you contemplate how to love freely. May the heart of Jesus infuse and shape your heart's desires. May the Holy Spirit ground you with strength and agency as you care for difficult people. And may the sacred love of the Trinity lead you on your road while on this journey, guiding you and cherishing you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and we all say together, amen. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Please join us again next week as we dig into the threes and we learn more about what makes us and more about our types. Oh.